it's eight o'clock. I'm going to call to order the International Falls Cook County Airport Commission regular meeting for May 29th at eight o'clock. And I don't see anybody here for public comment unless Darcy, you got something. And we move into the minutes of May 2nd. Vote to approve the minutes. I have a motion to approve the minutes. Is there a second? second? And there a second. Is there any discussion on it? Hearing none, I'll call for the sign. Aye. 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 Opposed? That one carries. Financial statements. Anybody have anything about them? I didn't see anything there out of the ordinary. Move to approve the financials along with the unpaid bills. We have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. We have a motion and a second to uh, pay the financials and the unpaid bills. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the sign. Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Move on to the engineer's report. Sean, you're up. Yeah, good morning, everyone. There should be a memorandum in your packet uh, highlighting this month's activity. I feel like we just met. Here we are again. So, two, two meetings in May this year. Oh, yeah, we did the job. Yeah, that's why. Mm -hmm. May 2nd was last month. Yeah. So, um, not too much has happened uh, since the last meeting, but we have a, a few items that we're uh, tracking. The fuel farm relocation project. Um, we're just working to get the contractor to wrap up some additional items. Um, yeah, they said they had a few more things to wrap up, but I haven't heard any from them, so we'll follow up with them. Um, we're expecting that final payment in June. Uh, the DI seam applicator equipment pad and storage tank, no significant activity this month. I think we're still waiting for the equipment. Um, the TSA improvement project, so that was installing the, the new baggage system uh, for TSA. Um, we do have one change order for this, uh, for work already performed. It was um, just moving um, an outlet or installing an outlet uh, at TSA's request and then installing a bollard to protect um, the conveyor system. So both those changes weren't uh, included in the original bid. Uh, so looking for uh, a $2,400 uh, change order approval. Uh, from you, it is uh, all funded by the uh, FAA as part of the uh, infrastructure grant. So um, you, you'll have grant support both from FAA and MnDOT on that. Someone care to make a motion on I'll that? I'll make a motion. Got a motion. A second. And a second. Any discussion on it? Hearing none, call for the sign. Aye. 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 Opposed? Change order is okay to pay. Uh, the next item is the GA apron reconstruction and runway 422 uh, rehabilitation project. It's kind of a long project name there, but uh, design is uh, still still going. We're, we're hoping for a, a bid at the end of June or July that's lining up with the FAA uh, funding cycle. So they're, they've requested that bid opening date. Uh, this is for construction in 2025. So we're getting bids, getting the contractor all lined up, getting the, the funding in place uh, for construction next year. So. FA is reviewing the 90%. Uh, we're working through to some phasing issues. Thor, I haven't checked in with you on this, but um, our friends at the FAA uh, want to do some night work to alleviate some some of the crossing of runway 1331. So we're kind of working through all those details, but all of that will be spelled out in the contract for the contractor to perform. So we'll work with them on that. Okay. I'm going to step out of here at false alarm going off here. Sure. Uh, um, so with that, um, we do have a construction administration contract that we'll be presenting in June, and Kyra has gone through an IFP process that's an independent fee estimate to evaluate that. So the other consultant has done their analysis, um, so Kyra will use that to compare uh, SEH's fee uh, once we submit that for the June meeting. So we're a little bit ahead of the game on that IFP review. Um, I think maybe one other item, maybe I'll cover this now, is uh, we met, I met with MnDOT Aeronautics to help access the remaining bond funds. Um, so basically they have new people at MnDOT that, um, well maybe re I'll rewind a little bit. So three years ago, four years ago, 
Um, the airport received $1.8 million in state bond funds to help with pavement infrastructure projects. Uh, you accessed approximately 600000 of that to pay for part of the runway phase three project. That leaves you with about $1.2 million that's in your bank account. Um, the plan has been to use that money on runway 422, the rehab, so that would be 100% funded with uh, bond funds. Um, and then the local share for the, the apron phases. So this upcoming project will be mostly funded with FA and bond funds with a very small local share. Uh, the one catch we have is uh, MnDOT has all new personnel, so we're trying to get them up to speed on the bond process and the application. Um, so we met with them a week ago just to make sure that we're not missing anything. Um, and it, it appears that we're all on the same page, so we're going to get our bids and then we're going, they're going to access those bond funds. We'll work with Kyra to get all the bond paperwork submitted. We've done that uh, in the past, so we'll have to dig in the files and find out all those things that are, are due. But uh, but it's good. The money's there. It's available for your uh, uh, your runway, taxiway, and apron projects. Um, so we're going to minimize that local share for, for that. So bond process is ongoing. That's kind of the, the short way of uh, sharing that. Perfect. <coughs> That's good news. Uh, the equipment loader, uh, or I'm sorry, the acquisition for equipment. Um, Thor and I have uh, worked with John Deere, uh, I think, many emails over the last two weeks to make sure we were getting the right piece of equipment. And um, we found that the loader is acceptable from John Deere. Um, it's a uh, John Deere 744. It's very, very simple for, for the airport's needs. Um, and then we're going through some of the attachments to make sure that they are uh, what the specifications called for. So we did actually re require a change from the contractor to get a, a more specific plow that, that mm -hmm. uh, we specified. So Thor, anything to add on that? I know we've been communicating quite a bit on that. Yeah, it, it typical uh, uh, bidding process uh, with the FA and, and uh, it's always, it, you, you think you've got it dialed in, you have to go back numerous times as, as Sean shared. And um, one of the things that was required in the bid package was that we were very specific in a in a uh, not only a 20 foot ramp, we call it a ramp hog, it's a 20 foot plow, but it's specifically a manufacturer, Schmidt Wasla, etc. We had very good luck with that equipment in the past. It's all metal, there's no poly on it, etc. We can't, we can bend it, but we don't usually bend it anyway. Um, so that was, uh, they, they provided us a, 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 a subpar uh, product in, in the, in the uh, bid, and uh, to, to credit to Sean effort, to, they've agreed to, to, up, to up, upgrade their, their bid to, to the better plow. Yeah. Sure. So with all that, uh, yeah, we're moving forward. The next step is the Buy American review. So we're not out of the woods yet. And then after yeah, all so you only spend, <laughs> you only spend fifty grand. You know. <laughs> Never mind. I'm, uh, 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> and the uh, aircraft de-ice equipment. That's the, the sprayer machine. Um, so that bid did look good from GSS, and they submitted their Buy American, and now that's with FAA for a review. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to get that equipment ordered here once those approvals are done. CIP updates, no significant updates there. Um, I guess the next item I have is uh, the TSA lease agreement is requiring a water test, a drinking water test. <laughs> so I know you guys have the best water up here, but they want to test to confirm it. So uh, we're working with um, a testing company, I think, to supply yeah. Ira and Thor a quote to, to complete that testing. You just send in the sample and you, you say that. just yeah. <laughs> they know this how to is charge for that. Yeah. Is there? Thirty emails later with my house. <laughs> oh yeah. Thirty emails the later, water, four forms. Yeah. The water test that they do out at the oh. plant isn't enough for them. I don't believe so. I think it, the, you have to get it through the pipes, and I don't know. Yeah, it's a, yeah it isn't like you get, you get to make sense and go to the tap and go to scooter back. And go, yeah. I don't know. Oh, you got you got to you you do some plumbing. You got just yeah, yeah, something. You got to yeah, different parts. It's it's quite a process. I know yeah. the count or the. Park Service does a water sampling thing, and they bring it to Cooch County, and she sends it off up here, right out of the county. You should ask Jason. Yeah, to get a water testing done. Yeah. Yeah, and they have to do it every week. I can. Oh, really? I will, yes. I'll, 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 I'll Everything can. from the park down on like Ashford Trail and Lake Cap Pokemon. I think they'd have the interest. They have to do their water testing every week to make sure there's no floating bacteria or anything else in it. And it all gets done right through Cooch County. This works for me. I can call Ted. So I wonder if a person could maybe 
Check That's base with that to see yeah. if we can get it done locally instead of outsourcing it somewhere okay. else. Do we hire? Is, is that something that you got to coordinate to have somebody yeah, do that water test? Or yes, Kyra. Well, I don't really know. I gave it to Thor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I went like this. Yes. <laughs> Here, Sean. Yeah. Call Ted and see if they're capable yeah, to do that. Doing that. Yeah. If that works for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah coordinated it for uh, an independent but, company to give Kyra a quote. Um, okay. and we haven't seen it yet, um, but if they, once we get that, we can see if the yeah. city or county. Yeah, and he might say, yeah. sort of, we're going to sure. have all these things. Sure. Just tell him what it involves. And, and try, yeah. Yeah, just give him a call. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. If it's anything like what I have to go through, they, they give you the bottles yeah. that you got to fill, yeah. you know, and they got to date it, it uh -huh. and say blah, blah, blah. Do all the paperwork and then send it in to Pace, and they yeah, that's right and then they mm -hmm. give you the review okay. back. So, <clears throat> so I don't know I'll if there's a charge of all five hundred bucks. You need to, if yeah, we had I'm kind of curious. I think the same thing. Other company. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, that's too expensive. Do we need to get together? Yeah. We don't have a number yet. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I said. Yeah. No, I'm not saying that. Well, between Kyra and Sean and we'll get it. We'll get it. We'll get it. And maybe I mean the maybe test. Maybe just do an approval to proceed with the test and then. Yeah, it has to get done either way. Oh, right. whatever, yeah. It's going to make cost some money, so I suppose yeah. we should have some a motion for it. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion that we approve these guys get the water testing done. Okay. okay. Is there a second? Second. Yeah. We have a motion and a second to get that done. Any more discussion on it? Hearing none, call for the sign. All right. Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, you can get the water tested. Try to hand it back. <laughs> and, this is, and I, Adam said it might be a good time down because we are we're testing lead lines and all. So I'm not yeah. sure that's one of them. Yeah. What else you got, Sean? We'll see. The last thing is a FA Mindown meeting on June 6th um, next week. So we're tracking that. Um, I don't have any other updates unless there's questions. Oh. Any questions for Sean? We move on to old business. I don't see anything on here, Kyra. <coughs> no old business. It's amazing. How about new business? We gotta wait till eight thirty, right? Yeah, I can try them here and see. Okay. One second, I'll just get a quick see if he's ready. He was in. He was in. He was in court, so we're gonna try to get. Otherwise, we can go into your manager's report. Yeah. Yeah. Do that. Do that. Do that. Do that. Do that. Okay. Just do the manager's um, and upper. Literally, uh, kind of just overlapping with what's already been shared, pretty minimal. Um, get ready for a busy season. Hopefully, uh, looks like the car rentals are, are, are full, right to the max. Uh, I know that Agus brought in a bunch more, and they're still short. Um, Resorts are full. You, your, your guys' numbers are oh, yeah. full, and, and uh, planes are filling up. Planes are filling up. Cabs are full. People, uh, local local uh, motels are are, are are full. So yes, blessings, uh, wonderful. Um, it's surprising how many people fly in here and actually stay in a hotel for a absolutely. night or two. Unbelievable. I had had one come in on Monday. Yep. And his bag didn't make it. His bag was still sitting in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And. Want to know where to deliver because we're yeah. going to Sioux Lookout well, Fishing Shirt. Oh, sorry, we're going to be at the American's Best sure. Hotel here until Wednesday. Sure. So if it comes in on Tuesday, just yeah. bring it to us over there. Yeah. And because they're waiting for a couple other guys to show up. A lot of folks, too, uh, drive, you know, they meet people here. Some of the teams, some of the folks drive in and some of the folks fly in. A lot of them, yeah, they drive, you know, they're in Chicago or Atlanta or whatever and draw the straw. What you lose, you drive, exactly. we'll meet you there. That's that actually exactly happened to me. Do. I remember I was working one Saturday and yeah. some a cop from Chicago came, not that we could use the bath, but he was in charge of hauling the fishing gear this year. Yeah. yeah. We had one guy sitting out here waiting to get on the plane. He says, I got to wait because I, I got a friend coming off the plane. That's going to give me a bag with my keys and blah blah blah, blah yeah. other stuff. Yeah. So he was, you know, 
kind of hold the things up because waiting for that guy to get there so he could get through security mm -hmm. and stuff that he needed when he gets back it, where he's going. Right. 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 Not as fun as when they left, you know, every now and then they'd leave Bob in paying for the gas out of the motor home and forget about Bob and head down the road. But <laughs> Did we get any more on that uh, guy that well, was I talking about bringing up more rental cars up here? We heard back from him. I said to well, him yesterday and I didn't hear back yet. So I'm, I'm not trying to follow up with Perfect. Yeah, it'd be nice if you could start getting on cars here now. Exactly, especially when it's starting to get busy season. Yeah, mm -hmm. you bet. <clears throat> yeah, I get a kick out too. The kind of says, "What's quicker, Uber or taxi?" And I says, "Well, taxi because there's no Uber." <laughs> yeah, Uber, yeah, Uber. <laughs> be a long way through. Yeah. And so you got to remember where you're at. Up here. Exactly. <laughs> What else you got, Thor? That's it, really. I'm, huh? I'm pro yeah, honestly, I've been thinking. Wait, I'm, there's so much in this roof deal that I, um, that when, when Jay Robert gets on, uh, there'd be a lot to share there. Uh, um, well, let, let me go with that. He, he, he come on and, and uh, my meeting. When was that? Two weeks ago. Whatever. You don't know. <laughs> <laughs> So we do this every day all day long. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. Yeah, so a couple of weeks ago when I went down to, to Jay Roberts' um, uh, office, uh, I was drinking through fire hose. It was, it was truly fascinating. Um, there was uh, myself and, and, uh, and uh, the attorney, Jay Roberts, and his fellow attorney, and we were in a room but literally about this big. And a um, uh, beautiful facility they have, and overly simplified. Uh, there was supposed to be seven, I think there was six groups of attorneys there and their teams. And I literally, from nine o'clock in the morning until four o'clock in the afternoon, we would be sitting there talking and, 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 and strategizing of how to handle the legalities, who's offering what. And, and, uh, and at uh, 9.01 in the morning, a guy walked in, he's the mediator. He's the, he's the attorney hired by all parties to, to quote unquote mediate, right? Um, you know, it's kind of like getting get the Niners and uh, you know, Christmas gathering with the family I meeting, mean, mediator. You know I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. <clears throat> so anyway, uh, so they, they walked in the door and, and, and I was introduced to him. And I was very impressed. And, uh, and uh, I told him, I said, listen, I said, we're not looking for blood, we're not looking for guts, we're just, you know, we'd like to get this fixed. That's what we want. Thank you. And the day started. And literally all day long, um, he would walk in and out of the room and say, well, you know, 50 for this or 70 for that, etc. And we'd go, no, yes, yes, no. And he'd go, and he'd leave and come back. And um, so it was truly, uh, it was very educational. Uh, it was, uh, uh, again, challenging, but really, really, really interesting. Learned a lot. And then, and basically at the end of, and to be honest with you, direct, at the end, at the end of, at, at nine to four o'clock, we hadn't come, we hadn't really, we didn't need much. Mm -hmm. So I thought, we better get Jay Robert here today and just let him share, you know, his angle is on this and, and the plans and, 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 and maybe take it a different direction with it. Um, the first person we hired, Michael Johnston, the gentleman uh, who helped us look at the roof originally and then and guided us to J. Robert, to the attorneys, he has been a phenomenal resource. Uh, we're very fortunate to have him on board. And, uh, and, and, and J. Robert's team, that attorney team, likes working with him, which is great. Um, he's been a great resource. On the day that they were here, um, when all teams were here, we had all the attorneys that day, 14, whatever it was, quite a, quite a, quite a pack. Um, the only good thing about, the, one of the good things about the meeting was it was raining that day, so they got to see, you know, what was going on, you know, exactly what was happening. So a lot of data has been, has been processed, and we have not set a date for the next mediation, and uh, we'll see if, 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 if uh, Jay Robert has, has something to bring to the table today. So we're not getting real close to getting anything done, huh? I, I, I sense, um, I, <laughs> well, that's a good question. Um, yeah, I, I kind of I get a sense that, that the, the, the one group wants the China, the other, one, the other group wants another, you know, one more dime, whatever, right? They're you know, back and forth. So we will see where, where this is going to go. But uh, yeah, uh, I'm confident. Um, I, think, I think there was some good fires lit there. I think there was some, some good dialogue going on, and, and we'll see. Okay. Mm -hmm. The good news is, that we got it in all under the, the proper time frame. It's all it's all underneath, you know. So as far as warranties, guarantees, mm -hmm. statute limitations, it's my understanding, and I'm pretty sure I'm right with that. That we're we're still good. So there's not a the clock cannot run out of it now. Okay. 
to it's open dark that's important so that's good mm -hmm. yeah i think i think at the end of the day too what, what i get a sense on is is that frankly with these entities um i get a sense they're fighting over pocket change right from the size of these entities right i'm like hey guys let's you know they can say, you guys pick up another 50, you pick up 100, you know, whatever that number is, let's do this, right? So maybe at the next, uh, forgive my language, the next time of Jesus, he maybe will, you know. Well, it would be nice to get it fixed. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, pretty good mold in the end. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All right, Kyra, what do you got? What do you got, Kyra? <laughs> You're not getting anything up to me now. <laughs> I thought, I'm a disappointed, I thought you could cover 20 minutes pretty easily. I was working on it. I was like, yeah, we got 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. First time in my life, Peter. I've first. already thrown on one of my own little quick stories. I mean, <laughs> yeah. but, and you'd want me to do any more because then I'll get carried away and then he's waiting to get on. It's yeah. true. Yeah. Oh. Uh, not a whole lot for me. Employments are in the packets. Um, again, we continue to be up over last year, so mm -hmm. you know, that's a good sign. Mm -hmm. Well, I would like to think they're going to be up because we've got bigger planes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Totally and yeah. adding another flight. So. Right. Um, also in the packets, I stuck in there uh, an email that I received in regards to an airport economic development summit that's being hosted oh, yeah. in Duluth. Yeah, good one. Um, People can join it, in. It might be something good for commission members to attend, um, so I, I thought I'd throw that in there. Um, it looks like it'd be kind of interesting. That was July 16th, wasn't it? Yes. Yep. July 16th. There is an option to attend virtually, but in person is always nice if you can attend. Anybody have an interest and want to go? So maybe I could try and get to it. See, it's on a Tuesday. You got more time than the rest of us. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I wouldn't. I may, I wouldn't I may too, but I'm only you know, filling in as a learning process <laughs> for me. I'm mean, always willing to learn. So. July. But. Uh, Probably need a motion to cover the expenses to, to attend it. So. Mm -hmm. I make a motion. Okay, I have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. The motion is second to cover the expenses for whoever wants to go. You know. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Like any one of us can go if you want. But I'll get you to sign me up, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. What does what does? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Poor Carol. When do you got to sign up by? Uh, uh, soon, there, isn't it? How many were there allowing you in person? And then I can't remember. Forty-three. Yeah, it, it was limited. Forty-two. That's what I said. The Forty-two. First Forty-two re people yeah. registered to be in person. Yeah. So try and get me in today so okay. I can get it on there. I may want to go as There's well. Pretty good chance I might meet some, some friends down there. Cool. You know. Some air guard friends that are probably working there. <clears throat> I know uh, Peter Kirsch is one of the speakers for the event. He's uh, uh, in the air. he's an attorney by background, but he provides a lot of really good guidance on airport operations. I I went to the one in uh, Breezy Point. I didn't go to everything, but what I did go to was very important with and learned. And, Good. Yeah, I watched. Excellent. Especially the small. Oh, airport one, but finally I looked at I looked at Tim. I said, you know, I'm pretty sure we're the only ones here from an airport that has pavement on it, though. But at this exactly, <laughs> <laughs> and there's no way I'm on in there. I, I'm not so sure I drive my car on the Breezy Point Airport. There you I'm go. Not, uh, 
throw a wrench into their plans. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't cars on airports, yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah. But you did you didn't learn. I did. Good, bad, or otherwise. You learned yeah, something. I didn't do the, Good. the session that day. But yeah. Oh, last night, um, the, the tragedy of the accidents yeah. on, the, on the lake and just reminded the, you know, the usage of the airport. You know, multiple, multiple medevacs yesterday afternoon, last evening, oh, yeah. had an accident on the east I, know, I, I, I don't know. I have no idea what the details yeah. are. Yeah, we were sitting on the boat and we heard the sirens. Oh, it sounded okay. like they were going for a shay yeah. Yeah. yeah, there was at least three helicopters. I don't know what. Okay. Two young girls crashed up by uh, Island View. Oh, yeah. On the shay Oh, yeah. It's terrible. They were upside down all the woods. And there is life threatening injuries. I read it this morning on the thing. For, mm -hmm. on the so, yeah. Kyra, do you have anything else? Nope, I'm good. You're good? Okay. Still got five minutes to wait for Mr. Robert. You know, something it's like like watching water boil. For I mean, like Pete yeah. said, yeah. Yeah. we've never we've never we've never ran we've never ran up there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Talk more. Look at that eight twenty six. Uh, it was eight twenty twenty five minutes ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jay Robert, you better call. Well, as long as we have five minutes. Yeah. Uh, jet bridge. Right. Yeah. What's it doing? The thing is. Yeah, we got. It sounds like it's gonna fall apart. Let's pick that up. Let, let, let's oh. hey, let's open that. There's some grease points in there. Oh, it's, it's it's just that's a street. Been, yeah, I'll have I'll have Haney look at it. Pairs look at it today also. But I know that we had talked in the past, Sean, about the FA possibly. Mm -hmm. Give me some thoughts there, would you please? Yeah. So there's FA will pay for a new boarding bridge every so often, and I think we planted the seed with the old FA person, the, the program manager, maybe a year or two ago, basically just saying there's been maintenance issues and the company's out of business, they're not so free it. Um, so trying to um, <coughs> the bridge uh, for the lifespan, um, kind of the eligibility lifespan, has, you have to go up the whole way. So, uh, so early purchasing and funding of a boarding bridge, I think, is what we're trying to convince the FAA that there's issues. So, I think, you know, a very thorough, um, you know, what they're going to look for is, you know, have you done your maintenance? You know, has everything been done? And if you can show that, and then you show your expenses, and then it just becomes a, all right, we're spending all this money on this, or we're having all these issues, or these days are down. So, a, a thorough documentation log of, of those issues, I think, will really help our case. We'll bring it up to the FAA again on June 6th when we meet with them. Um, but if that's a, a chance that, you know, you and I or whoever can uh, really develop that list and uh, the operations and uh, maintenance logs are going to be key to, you know, buying the FAA support. So. I, know, I mean, it's still doing its job, but it's just, oh, it's terrible. It's just one of these days. It's just, I know that, it's just going to fall apart. <laughs> yeah, I know FAA Queen Lindsay's on board, so that's, that's a big part yeah. of that battle, obviously. Yeah, and there's a chance we could use the infrastructure money, which has a little bit uh, more flexibility than your typical FAA funding. So maybe we'll play that angle and yeah. see if we can get something, uh, something that works. Very cool. Come on, Jay Robert, let's go. You got one minute, or I'm going to call him. There you go. You'll be timely. Carrot, are we already taking care of any of these? That I can sign them now, or? So those are going to be, correct me if I'm wrong, Sean, what you sent me, the uh, grant request letters? Yes. Yeah, so in the packet there we have the change order, which is uh, was approved earlier in the meeting, and then a grant request uh, <laughs> to get FAA funding for, um, this would be the TSA project, and the loader, and the uh, aircraft the ice mm -hmm. equipment. So that's just a letter requesting the funds okay. of projects that we've already. So I can just sign them because we're signing them. Yeah. yeah, and then there's okay. a cost review analysis mm -hmm. letter in there as well. So just three signatures. Good. Dear Robert, look at that. <coughs> we can even see you. <laughs> Can't hear you. Here. Jay Robert, you're muted. I, I, and it appears as though that my um, uh, sound wasn't working. We can hear you now. We can hear you now, Robert. 
Do you have can am I echoing? No. No. I'm going to exit out of the computer program because I've got an echo and just go with telephone if that's okay with you all. That's fine. Hey, we'll, we'll miss your face though. <laughs> okay, at least now I, I when I, for some reason, uh, despite pressing mute or not mute, I was not receiving uh, my microphone, my computer was not working, so I'll just have to use telephone and We'll, we'll have to manage like uh, cavemen and use the telephone rather than video. You're dealing with oh. northern Minnesota folks. We'll, we'll understand. Okay. Fair enough. Please. Uh, at least you can. Go ahead. I say at least you can hear me. We got you. That's good. Uh, Jerob, thanks for joining us. Um, uh, we invited you today just to please share with the group, kind of bring them up to speed of where we're at. Uh, please share what happened uh, at our uh, mediation uh, gathering at your at your office, and uh, I'll hand it off to you, please. Sure enough. So, the mediation is essentially a, a prerequisite to the arbitration, mm -hmm. and although offers were starting to be made, the mediator essentially said, "Well, they're not going to have enough." money today so let's call it she asked us for a final offer with regard to the spread now after that as is procedure he stated that the mediation was not successful to the arbitration management company however prior to him leaving we suggested that we were going to do some more investigation with regard to the repair that we needed and even get a new number for it. Not that we are gonna start bidding against ourselves. However, uh, what we wanna know is what are the actual alternatives we would consider with regard to the repair to the facility. Here's the thing. Um, there is one unusual aspect with regard to your leaks. We could, I suspect, circle back to the mediator and simply raise the money to correct the sources of water. I actually feel quite confident that we can do that with just some minor negotiation. However, both our engineer and I expect Mike Johnson, the consultant who has worked for that engineering firm for years, both say that in addition to the construction errors that occurred at the property, there's a, there's a, a fundamental design error for this building. And I think this building would be a fine terminal in, you know, Texas or Arizona, but International Falls has different requirements. It's disappointing and surprising that these engineers didn't contemplate that, but even an engineer representing the uh, design professionals, there's a guy I know, his name is Jeffrey Jilson, he was at the last inspection that I did, and he said to me, well, what we have here is design error. And I looked at him and I said, you realize you represent uh, the designer, and he said, well, then don't quote me on that. Because, uh, you know, <laughs> so, you know, he and I have known each other for 20 years. He and I share some hobbies and so forth. Uh, so the fact of the matter is we have to take a different approach to settling this case than would be typical. Typically, I would have an estimate to fix the leaks and I would acquire that money and that would be a settlement. But what we need is enough money to implement design changes that we want to occur. Yeah. And it, it, it's unusual. Normally we don't say, by the way, the, the dormer skylights uh, have to be removed, which is takes away one of the architectural features that has some aesthetic value and some functionality in terms of yeah. the pleasantness of the building. But it has become apparent to us that based on the climate and you know the needs for this facility, that that ultimately will be what we need to do. So whether we are forced to go through the arbitration and we obtain a, a judgment at the arbitration or we, we obtain a check that way, or whether we move forward with settlement, and I want to make 
clear that even though the our, the mediation was declared to be quote unquote unsuccessful and we were put back onto the arbitration calendar, our goal at this time is to essentially understand better what it will cost us to get us what we need, not necessarily what we want in terms of you know the keeping those those the skylights and so forth, which were aesthetically pleasing, but to get us what we need. And what we need is, is a, a weatherproof building. So simultaneously with beginning to prepare for the arbitration as if the arbitration is moving forward. And mind you, a lot of people confuse the terms mediation and arbitration. A mediation is merely a negotiation session whereby you use an intermediary to ob obtain offers and obtain counter offers. Uh, simply because psychologically, for some reason, parties like to give those offers to a mediator rather than to me directly. Um, they then to keep their offers confidential, confidential, which for some reason pleases people psychologically, and the money can often be raised. So there's that. That's what mediation is. And then there's arbitration. Arbitration is essentially a presentation of the evidence on both sides with a private party rather than a judge ruling and making a decision. And the arbitrator in our circumstance is a man named Greg Bistrom. He's been a construction lawyer probably, I don't know, 40 plus years, 45 years or so. I've known him since I was just out of law school. So if we go through the arbitration, he will make decisions. And I, I as an attorney, I, while I'm not allowed to guarantee results, we have very good evidence of errors. In fact, the last time we conducted an inspection, it was the building was actually leaking some. So that made it quite clear that there's no denying that, that there's something wrong with the building and that we are not merely people who are such extraordinary perfectionists that we just want every little thing fixed, even if it doesn't need to be fixed. So it seems impossible for the other side to say there's nothing wrong. What happens in an arbitration, which actually, like I say, is like a trial, but it's to a private you know, judge. What happens in an arbitration whereby you have essentially undeniable evidence that there's something wrong is you will find that we present our evidence in as clear a fashion as we can. And the evidence must show that number one, there is something wrong. And number two, this is the proper mechanisms for repairing it. These are, this is the design for repair. And this is how much that design will cost. Now, the, the defenses that they will have to that, the, that argument is twofold. Number one, if our design for repair constitutes an improvement to the building that we did not originally pay for, they will, they will argue that we are asking for betterment. And betterment is a term that is used in, if you, if you pay for a building uh, clad in brick and then later you ask for a building clad in sterling silver, well that's betterment at least value-wise, not necessarily functionality-wise. So one defense that they will argue is that the design changes that we are asking for is betterment. And one argument that they will all make is, hey, it's not me, it's the other one guy who did it. And they essentially point fingers at each other. I believe that that will be the central defense if we go to arbitration, whereby each of them blame the others. The, the design firm will say, well, we designed it fine, and if they had done it right, it wouldn't have leaked. And the contractors will say, we built it fine, but this design is so poor that it, this was going to leak no matter what. Now, there is a certain comfort to being a plaintiff, which we are in an arbitration like that, where the other sides are blaming each other, but we still carry the burden of showing the cost of repair subject to not making any outrageous betterment claims. But I believe that based on the fact the arbitration schedule and the fact that we have not opposed kind of an extended arbitration <coughs> schedule, that we have enough time that settlement may be the likely resolution of your claim. And so our approach to settlement is instead of utilizing the engineer, and we, by the way, we had to hire an engineer because the other sides have engineer. In order for, for testimony to be admissible, you have to have a licensed professional engineer. Instead of going forward with his design, 
We're consulting with Mike Johnston, the original consultant, I think, who connected all of us together with regard to what he thinks could and should be done to correct this building. And I expect that his scope of repair will be less subject to betterment arguments. But here's another crucial point. I am not likely to give the other side Mike's conclusions because he won't be testifying to them and therefore it's not really any of their business. Instead, what I will do is have Michael design a solution that he thinks will correct this building. Then I will have a contractor give us an estimate to implement that change. And then I believe that number will be lower than the wholesale design change that our engineer has signed off on. And now he hasn't completed those designs. He's just done essentially general outlines as to what the changes will be. And we've got an estimate based on those general outlines. And uh, it's, it's somewhat high. But I expect that when Mike Johnson comes back and says, hey, Rob, here's what you can do in order to fix this building, that his number will likely be lower. We're having some difficulty acquiring contractors to give us estimates in International Falls because there are not that many large-scale contractors located in that area, but we think we, we have a company that will do this for us. And we continue to look, my, my colleague, my young associate, Brian Wiley, continues to see as his number one task at this time is to acquire contractors who will ultimately put a number to Mike Johnston's revised plan. At that time, you all will have a decision. If I have uh, a revised plan that costs, say, 25% less than the engineer's plan, we then have some freedom to accept a lower number, and the opposition will have a sense that they're getting some sort of a discount because we previously disclosed a higher number based on the engineer's design. And I think that if Mike comes up with a design that does that is less intrusive but and also less costly yet effective, that that may be a path to settlement. Otherwise, if that is not the path to settlement, oh, and by the way, I'll likely re-engage the mediator to participate in that process in the event that we come forward with some numbers that seem satisfactory to us and some designs that seem satisfactory to us. But in the event that we are able to settle on that way, well, then we'll be done. Otherwise, we will continue to prepare for the arbitration so that we can present our evidence. We will prepare arguments as to why this does not constitute betterment. This is essentially what our original expectation was when we contracted with these parties. And our contract was design a properly scoped building that obviously does not leak, that meets the needs of International Falls, that meets the needs needs of the commission, etc. So what you're seeing right now is us doing essentially a two-pronged path. One path is to come up with alternative designs and numbers to fit them, while simultaneously making sure that in the event that settlement does not occur, that we are prepared to present our evidence at arbitration in a compelling way so that the arbitrator decides in our favor and he makes the decision as to the division between the various defendants regarding their particular shares. So while oftentimes a conversation like this is a pretty straightforward, and I'll say, well, we're preparing our evidence, we're preparing our design, we're preparing our numbers, we're gonna present the evidence at arbitration, and we're gonna impeach the other side based on the errors and what's plainly observable on site. What I expect instead is that um, we're going to be running these, this two-tier path one thing I'd like to do if we're at, as part of the uh, arbitration prong is to actually have an inspection with the arbitrator on site and that will require some additional um, uh, you know, logistics in order to get him up there so that he has a better perspective on where it's leaking and, and what's going on. He knows enough about construction. He's like me in that ultimately you become a designer and contractor if you practice in this area of law for Oh, I've been practicing over 20 years, uh, gosh, over 27 years in this area of law. But he, like me, has an understanding of construction so that if, if we explain to him what the issue is, it's much better and much clearer if he's actually been on site.
So those are our two prongs. Those are the things that we are doing. We are unfortunately stuck in this process called AAA, which is the American Arbitration Association, and we're stuck there because the original contract required it. Um, I don't like our, uh, AAA. They, they charge way too much money. Uh, I mean, they are 200% more costly than any other arbitration organization, but we are absolutely stuck with them due to the fact that our contract required the alternative dispute resolution process to be through arbitration. Uh, it actually, for your information, would be cheaper to have had no arbitration clause and simply to litigate this matter and resolve this matter through court-ordered mediation or court-ordered settlement conference. But because we are contractually bound to do AAA, which is not unusual, just so you know, this wasn't a, a, a bizarre contractual provision, but it is, the, it is the provision that we are stuck with. That's our approach and that's why we're in AAA. So we want to slow down the arbitration process, get the arbitrator to actually see the property while simultaneously looking at more cost efficient corrections for the building. I think that ultimately, whether we get a verdict in arbitration or whether we get a settlement, it's become clear that those dormer style skylights, uh, and people have used a variety of different ways to describe them, uh, will have to be replaced uh, or, or removed because they essentially act as barriers to falling snow on the roof and the sliding of snow and they allow snow and ice to build up. I, water, as you know, expands when it freezes, therefore that creates pressure on various seams on the roofing issues and things like that and it's problematic for this building. It could have been done differently, but it wasn't. So I expect that ultimately the design uh, will have to be based on as long as you accept it, a removal of those dormers. And then we have to also address the issue of the main entrance, um, rubber EPD rubber membrane roof section above the main entrance. And we have to note that that main entrance also has what's called a reverse grade where it directs snow and ice and water back toward the building rather than shedding it the way it might have been ideal. So that's a long-winded explanation of the current status. <laughs> what, what, what's the time frame on this? Well, I would expect that um, we will, if we settle, we will settle this summer. And if we go to arbitration, it will be in the fall. I understand that there is a real need to not go through another winter, and we are well aware of that. So we're trying to expedite settlement well, slow down arbitration a little bit so that we don't have to go through the expense of arbitration, which is much more costly than settlement through mediation or settlement through <coughs> alternative <coughs> and alternative bids. Well, I just any more questions? My concern is that we make sure we get this going so that we can get it done this summer because it's just going to. We're going to get mold in here pretty soon. Well, one thing about mold, and obviously I deal with a lot of water infiltration, is that mold only grows in the event that there are mold spores ready. So if you plow a field, corn's not going to grow unless you, you plant some corn seed. Well, the same is true with mold. While people see black blackness on drywall and things, and they contact me and they say, we've got mold all over this place, it's more typically mildew. Mold is not as common, the, the toxic mold, as you would expect. There are two types of toxic molds. One is cladosporium and one is stachybotrys. They are extremely rare in Minnesota because they do not survive cold weather. Um, the more common molds, the molds that we all have in our home and in all of our buildings are called aspirilagus and penicillium. Those molds are in every building already and they adversely affect very few people. There are some people who are allergic to high concentrations of them. But the mold fear that we hear because of those massive and incredible cases in the southern part of the United States are not as common in Minnesota. They're extremely uncommon. And I can tell you that as someone who's litigated probably four to 500 water infiltration cases and had dozens upon dozens of buildings tested for mold, even when you see that black growth on drywall, um, it's, in my experience, much more typically uh, uh, mildew than it is black mold that, that occurs in the south because, like I say, 
Stachybotrys and Cladosporium survive much better in the south because they are killed by cold. Well, that's, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Thank you for that information. Done, you know, before the Super winter is. Nice. <laughs> I agree. I would like to settle this case in the next two months, and that way work could begin. I don't know that I'll be able to achieve that because we have multiple parties. We have a bureaucracy in the form of AAA. That's why, in addition to the prong of moving forward on arbitration, I'm doing a completely separate prong of trying to continue mediation, acquire alternative designs. The reason I'm pursuing that secondary prong is for speed. Okay. Good. Well, I appreciate everything you're doing. Sounds yeah, like you're on I top do. of it. So. And I think when you do find something out, just let us know, I and mean, we can call a special meeting to get this thing moving. Right on. Absolutely. Yeah, well, my, the job right now is for us to get the alternative designs from Mike Johnston mm -hmm. and get a contractor up there to bid it, or two, and so we can say, okay, well, our engineer says this is what needs to be done. That's going to cost X dollars. We have this alternative design, which is satisfactory to us, and that's less. Now let's go back to the mediator and ask him to raise that money. Sounds good. Good. Thank you. Are there other questions for me? Jay Robert, I don't believe so. Yes, no? No. Hey, thank you very much. Uh, appreciate the, 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 the wonderful presentation. Um, very thankful that you joined us today. I, was, uh, I, I gave them about a 5% a uh, uh, prefix to your, to your <coughs> thank you very much Jay Robert thank you, and uh, just appreciate your work on it well I'm glad to be of help sorry about my uh, computer looking like I was in some kind of slow motion silent movie but oh uh, no that was, was yeah. it was it was entertaining it was, yeah. Yeah. I, and, I, and I'd like to was going to thank him for the throwback in time when this was a big deal having a conference call Exactly. Yes. It was a big deal. It's true. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, thanks again. Thank you, Jay. Well, Robert. Have a great day. I will. Con yeah, I'll continue to update Thor. And if at any time you want me to appear in front of the whole commission again, I'm glad to do it. Perfect. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Jerry. Take care. Excellent. Take care. Thank you, Mike. Bye now. Oops. Sorry. Well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, like I, like uh, as I was mentioning, it's a fire hose. It's incredible. <laughs> Oh, I just see that got good news from Doc. Yeah. But I think we'll get some new buttons. Those, those yeah. buttons <laughs> just need to go away. Yeah. They got you know, and you know, and when you got a roof that comes like this, right. you know, then you got this oh, truck. Yeah. You, you know, know it's happening right, right there, there in the truck. Sure. 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 Let it run so straight off and be done. Right. Right. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. Anyway. Excellent. Any other business? Kyra, anything else? Next meeting. Next meeting then. June 26th. June 26th. Works for me. That works. 8 a.m. right in here. Okay, June 26th it is. Thank you. And with nothing else, we'll adjourn at 8.55.